Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome back to part two of pruning up my avatar grove, a grove of old growth cedars. My avatar grove here is inspired by the real life avatar grove near Port Renfrew in British Columbia, Canada. The main tree in this forest is designed to look like an old growth cedar, one that is over a thousand years old, and it has that cathedral style top to it with all the branches pointing upwards and eventually I'll kill off the main apex of the tree so it'll be dead wood surrounded by living branches growing up. Very reminiscent of an old growth cedar. I've been working away pruning up the trees that surround the main tree. I haven't touched the main tree yet so that will be coming. So I'm going to work my way around the back of the forest pruning up all the trees in the background and then I'll begin to tackle the main tree. I'm beginning the work quite early in the morning today. It's going to take a long time to finish pruning up this forest. I've got my scissors, so here I go. I was working around the back of the forest. So I think I'm on this tree right here. Wow, some of these branches are getting long on it. It's quite common on these cedars, if you have an older branch, that at the base of that branch you'll get a new shoot growing. And typically on bonsai we prune out those new uh, kind of sucker growth at the base of your older branches. But on these forest cedars, I generally use those branches and I prune off the older branch. That keeps your branches thinner and more compact, closer to the trunk line. I would only do this for forest trees not for a bonsai that you're trying to grow mature branches. But in this case, I prune off the older branches and keep my younger growth that's closer to the trunk. Here's an example of that. I've got this younger growth coming out at the base of my older branch. So in this case, I'm pruning off the older branch, which is right in here, like that. So taking off an older, thicker branch, and I'm replacing it with that young new shoot that's coming out from the same spot. If you don't do that, you find your branches will get too thick compared to the size of the trunk of the tree. So I'm always replacing my older branches with younger ones, if possible. Here's another older branch I'm taking off, replacing it with a younger one. These weeping branches, they just form naturally. And I like them, I keep them, but I have to prune them shorter because they'll grow too long. They'll just keep growing until they reach the ground. And it doesn't look well, very miniature if you have your branches too long. I'm also watching for whorls of branches where you have, you know, four or five branches growing from one spot. So I'm keeping my best branches and pruning away the others. That avoids you getting that thickening of the trunk in one area. You can kind of get a bulge. So here's another example of an older branch coming out. Replacing it with a younger one. You now you have to remember the goal is to keep these trees looking good into the future because these trees are just young. But, you know, over many, many years they will slowly mature and start to look more like old growth trees instead of young ones. So you have to think of the future. That's why I replace the thicker branches with younger ones, younger, skinnier branches. Now here's an example. I have one, two, three, four branches growing from one spot. So I've got to pick my best branch so it won't be the one that crosses the trunk line here. I'll take that one out. This one's a nice branch. This one underneath is sort of uh, not so good looking, so I'll take that one out. And there's a thick one out the back I can take off. Like that. Always keeping your better looking branches 
and pruning away the ones that are getting too thick or aren't going a good direction if they're not. These bottom ones should cascade and as you go up the tree they should become more horizontal and then upright in the apex. That's typically how these cedars grow in nature. I use a combination of pruning and pinching to keep the branches nice and compact. Sometimes it's very difficult to see what's going on with the tree. Sometimes you get growth that's so thick you can't really see the branch structure. So you just prune away, slowly pruning away, and eventually you kind of expose the branch structure and you can see what's going on a little more clearly. And sometimes you have to prune trees that surround the tree you're pruning to be able to get in and see what's going on. I've got an example here where I've got two fairly mature branches kind of growing from the same spot. They're very close to each other in there. And in this case, uh, I'm, I'm going to keep the one that's coming out to the side and the one that's coming out front, I'm going to kill it off and just leave it as a deadwood branch because it's kind of growing straight out the front and it crosses, part of it crosses to the interior here. So instead of just pruning it off flush, I'll just keep some deadwood on that one because they're kind of, well, they're mature, so they, they'll stay as deadwood for many, many years. I've been removing a lot of the lower branches in this area, kind of raising the canopy up. It really opens up this area on the landscape and it makes the trees look taller and more forest-like. You don't want a lot of low growth in the interior of the forest. At the edges, you want more lower branches, but in the interior of the forest, usually the trees are very, you know, all you see is the trunk line and the foliage is just up in the canopy. So that's what I've been doing is clearing out some of these lower branches, opening up the landscape. I'm beginning the work around the back of the forest and the trees in the back I will keep my lower branches because it creates forced perspective. You can see the lowest branches are quite high in the front and as you go towards the back you want your foliage line to drop lower and lower. The trees in the back should look like miniature versions of the trees in the front. So the foliage line will be dropping down and that will also provide a nice green backdrop to the forest so it looks like it goes off into the distance. It helps create that illusion of perspective and depth. So there's the back of the forest. You can see I have lots of low branches that I'll be keeping. I'm working away at the back of the forest. It's really dense back here. There's many, many layers of trees and I'm trying to prune each tree compact so it has its own spot of sunlight when viewed from above. But yeah, I have to do a lot of pruning in this area. It's getting very, very dense. I don't want branches from one tree overhanging the other. So it requires a lot of pruning. Difficult decisions too. But if you don't do it, it'll just keep getting worse and worse and you'll end up with a, you know, a mess so bad you can, you, it's hard to fix. You've just got to keep up with your trees, otherwise it just becomes a hedge. Oh, that sounds like the zombie apocalypse. And sometimes it means, you know, taking some branches back fairly hard like this one, taking the whole end off. You know, some hard pruning. The forest is coming along nicely. I'm opening up the back of it there. It's looking, looking a lot better. And I'm working on this tree now. It's just a dense, really, really dense. Like it's hard to see the branch structure. So I'm just pruning away slowly, you know, getting rid of all my vertical branches and gradually exposing it so I can see the branch structure. At the moment it's just a, a ball of foliage. So yeah, it'll take a while to prune up this tree. And I'm thinking this tree, this tree's in the cathedral style, and this one has a lot of branching up top. 
and I could make it like an intermediate tree. So this one's the cathedral style here, and then this tree is sort of in between the younger trees and the cathedral style. The sun is getting higher in the sky now, and I'm starting to get some nice lighting on the forest. That dappled shade on the forest floor. Here is a look at that tree that was just a massive foliage. So I've exposed the branches. I've selected my branches that I'll be growing up into that cathedral style crown. Picking radial branches and making sure they're not, you know, there's no two branches growing from one spot. So I'm working my way down the tree. I've got quite a, a bulge. There are a lot of branches coming from one spot here that just didn't get cleaned out. So I, I'm keeping just one branch in that area and I'll prune away the rest. And I'll work down the tree, kind of uh, pruning it up to keep it compact. Maybe removing some of the lower branches just to get a little more height to that tree. Yeah, I think some of those branches are a little low on it. I was thinking about those trees I wanted to plant out front, kind of uh, right about here. And I think those trees and mats would be too big to, uh, they would take away from the main tree. So I have these Thuja seedlings here. I think they'd be perfect. I can plant them out front here. There's three in this pot. And I think they'd look good. All the trees in the back of this planting were all started from seed. They're just seeds that drop from my cedar hedge there into the pots, into the bonsai pots, and they just grow everywhere. So I think they'd be perfect. I can grow them nice and vertical out front, and over the years they'll thicken up. It only takes, some of the ones in the back there are like maybe five or six years old now. And that they're starting to look pretty good. They're getting bark on them and a branch structure. So, so I think that's what I'll do. Uh, and that'll have to wait until spring to repot these. But yeah, I'll just uh, keep growing my little seedlings with uh, you know the plan that they'll go in the forest. So in the forest here, I've done a lot of pruning now. You can see that tree, which you couldn't see, even see the branch structure is now pruned up. I still have some work to go. Um, it's still quite dense in here. Um, and I'm pruning these from the front. So kind of looking behind this foliage to see if there's something to fill in the background here. I don't want it bare that you can just look through the forest. I want a backdrop of green if possible. So yeah, I think, you know, apart from the main tree here, I think I've got all the surrounding trees about, I don't know, I would say 90% pruned. They're well on their way. Here is a look at what I've taken off. There's just piles of foliage, moss, and piles of branches and foliage here. I've taken a lot off this forest. There's a lot of trees in this forest. I've never counted exactly how many, but there's a lot. The sun is shining today and it's getting very warm in the greenhouse. So I moved my avatar grove out to the bench here to keep it cool. I gave it a good watering. I'm also in the process of watering all my other trees. They're starting to dry out on this warm sunny day. Once it begins to cool off, I'll move back into the greenhouse and finish the pruning on the Avatar Grove. I've got all the trees watered and fertilized. I think while the forest is out, the Avatar Grove, I'm going to clean up my workbench. You can see all the clippings I've taken off here. It is after supper now. Things are cooling off. I'm going to bring the Avatar Grove back into the greenhouse and continue working on the trees. Okay, before I continue the work on the Avatar Grove, I'll just give you a few updates of some of the recent work I've done and the results. Over here is my Alberta spruce that I pruned up. I used the blue scissors to shear it to shape. You can see it's staying green. I got a little bit of browning at some of the tips, but so far it's looking good. 
Here's a shot of my Cotone Aster. So it's also looking really good. It's growing well this year. Beside it is my Black Locust. I gave that quite a severe pruning and it's bounced back really nicely. The growth came in where I was expecting it to, which is nice. It's always good to get good results from your pruning. In the blue pot here is my Wisteria. I gave that a really severe root pruning in spring and the shoots on it are quite long now. So it's recovered really nicely, growing really, really well. Here's a shot of my Arakawa rough bark maple. I gave that a light pruning in spring, not too heavy because it was separated from an air layer. My objective this summer is to grow a good root system. So in spring, I'll uh, be repotting it and I'll have to give it a good pruning. Like I'll really have to bring it down in height. Um, quite short. It's kind of long and leggy at the moment, but that's good. It's generating roots and that's what I want for this season. Over here, both of my junipers are out in full sun now and they're looking really, really healthy. I kept them shaded for a while after I pruned them just so the foliage didn't get scorched. A lot of people have been asking me about my acacia trees that I've grown from a seed. So here's the pot of them. You can see they're growing really, really well, getting tall. So I'm going to let them grow for uh, maybe a few more weeks and then I'll prune them back to size. I recently pruned my yellow hibiscus down to, well, basically a stick and you can see all the new shoots coming out on it now. It's doing really, really well. It should fill out quite nicely this year and it may even flower. My Austrian pine is growing really well. The needles are lengthening and they do that. They just keep getting longer over the whole summer. So by fall, they're quite long. But yeah, it's looking nice and healthy, doing really well. My uh, sacrifice branches up in the apex are also growing really well, thickening that trunk up and hopefully smoothing it out. The Schifflera here that I defoliated and pruned in spring is looking really good. It's filling out really nicely. My two ficus microcarpus that I defoliated and pruned in spring are also doing really well. Ficus fancy is filling out. The canopy is getting quite dense up here. Looking good. And my ficus microcarpa that I grew from a seed is also looking really good. The trunk is turning a nice kind of silvery color, silvery gray, and the canopy's filling out really nicely. It's gaining strength every day as the canopy fills out. My other red flowering hibiscus is also filling out quite nicely. You can see the canopy's filling up with foliage and leaves. Yeah, it's looking quite good. I gave that quite a pruning this spring also. Down here is my fiddle leaf fig. It's getting a good sized trunk on it. So I'm quite happy with that. And you know, even though the leaves are still huge, they're a lot smaller than they would be on a full size, you know, tree. So there is some miniaturization going on. I still have some large leaves left over from indoors, but the outdoor leaves are coming in quite compact. There's the ducks in the bonsai area. Here's an update on my poplar tree, the one that I pruned the top off the trunk right here, sealed it with uh, rubber cement, and you can see the branches growing out around the trunk now. So it's doing really well. It's getting quite tall. So it recovered from that hard prune quite well. And uh, yeah, so I'm just letting it grow this summer. And then in the winter when it loses its leaves, I'll be doing some more styling work on it. Trying to get that typical poplar image. My Brazilian rain tree is growing really, really well. You can see all the new growth sticking up here. It's not really getting the weeping branches underneath. Uh, all the growth is kind of going vertical, so I think I'll have to prune that vertical growth back soon, hoping to encourage you know more 
branches down lower. My Natal ficus is developing nicely. It's getting the canopy back on it after its last pruning. The trunk's looking good. That's getting a nice branch structure. The canopy needs filling out, but it's, it's getting there. I'm uh, happy with its progress. My trident maple that I defoliated, pruned up, has come back into leaf. There's a lot of good strong shoots on it. My field maple also behind it here. That got defoliated, pruned up. And you can see it's just got lots of new branches and lots of new leaves. It's looking good. In the greenhouse here, I have a lot of Zins trees that he gave to me. And the Natal ficus is in flower here. So I'll show you the flower. There it is there. And it smells absolutely beautiful. Very, very fragrant. The hibiscus, the Cascade hibiscus, is doing really, really well. Looking nice. The ficus benjamina, the uh, non-variegated, is growing really well now. And the variegated one is also growing really, really well, filling out nicely. Zin's pomegranate that we pruned up here in the bonsai zone is growing like a weed. So you can see the trunk down there, which is getting quite thick. And it's just, I'm just letting it grow developing those branches thicker and the vigor and then it'll get another severe pruning once it loses its leaves. I'm having good luck with the pawpaw trees so I have one pawpaw tree growing in here and over here in this pot I have three of them growing. There's one here, tall one here and one here with the seed still attached to it. So that's good. So that's four on the go here I'll show you the other pawpaws. Before we leave the poly house here, I'll show you Zin's hibiscus here. It's growing really, really well too. The canopy's filling out on it. It's looking nice and healthy. So let's head to the greenhouse now and check out the other pawpaw trees. All right, in we go. So these were the pawpaw seeds that Barb from Michigan sent to me. And they're doing really, really well. So. I've got, you can see the seedlings coming up here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 at least on the go. And then I'm still soaking the other pawpaw seeds down here. So I'll be planting those soon too. So I should have lots of pawpaw trees. Most of them will be grown to uh, grow into full-size fruit trees, but I'll save some for bonsai. It was full sun today, nice and hot in the greenhouse here, so I gave all my succulents a good deep water and fertilize. So they should be quite happy. They'll uh, stay hydrated for the next few days. I won't have to water them until, until they dry out once again. Most of the trees are looking really, really good. I did possibly lose my grapefruit tree. This one here. I had it in the basement and I noticed the tip started dying on it. And I thought, well, that's no problem. It'll sprout from the trunk somewhere, but it hasn't. I'm uh, very worried about it. It may be a goner. Somehow it is getting dark out. The day's coming to an end. I've got the doors closed on the greenhouse because I had them open, the one door open like this, and a bird flew in the greenhouse and was flying around trying to get out. Luckily, it didn't hurt itself, and it flew out fairly quickly, but that was a surprise. I've never had that before. My Sarissa tree is growing really, really well. I see I have one flower on it. Oh, it just I just knocked it off. Yeah, it's growing really, really well. Um, I have done a little bit of pruning on it. If there's a shoot, like say this one, that's sticking up out of the profile that's really vigorous, I prune it back to kind of balance the vigor and have the canopy grow equally. So it's not, all the vigor isn't going into one branch. So it's kind of, 
yeah, growing evenly so I get a nice distribution of fine branches. It will be due for a major prune coming up where I'll have to take each one of my little branches, wiggle them around and see what needs pruning. It's starting to get quite overgrown. So is my Chinese elm. I'll show you that. It's over here. So you can see the length of the shoots on the Chinese elm. They're just taking off and growing like crazy. So I'll have to do a bit of pruning to that fairly soon also. I'll show you an update to the larch forest too. All those shoots are really starting to elongate now. You can see them growing in. They're quite fine and delicate. But yeah, it's uh, taking off in vigor to the point where some of these can be pinched. But I'll let them grow a little more strongly, let them harden off, and then I'll prune it back once again and wait for the third flush of growth. I made good progress on the forest today, getting all the surrounding trees pruned up. Tomorrow, I'm going to tackle the main tree, getting that pruned up also. That is all for today and part two of this series. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.